Hey gang, welcome to another fun-filled and action-packed issue of the PlayStation Underground CD Magazine. Um, Maggie, what's with the outfit? What? It's our holiday issue. I just thought I'd wear something a little more festive. Oh, I see. And here I thought you were planning a pre-dawn raid on the citizens of Whoville. Whatever, Ebenezer. Just because I'm the only one around here with any holiday spirit. <sighs> Fine. Continue, please. As I was saying, we've been doing tons of globetrotting to pack a lot into issue 3.4. First, we headed back to Japan for the official unveiling of the next generation of PlayStation. You're finally going to get a chance to see what this incredible hardware can do. Then we took a bite out of the Big Apple with Um Jammer Lammy's band Milk Can at their premiere party at the famous New York club, The Roxy. After that, it was off to Los Angeles where we spent a few days hanging out with the creators of CTR, Crash Team Racing, and Spyro 2, Ripto's Rage. Wait till you see how these guys spend their free time. What holiday would be complete for any gamer without some new games for their library? So stop by the vault and sample some hot new demos before filling out your wish list. Oh yeah, we've added a few new features and surprises to this issue, so check it out! Oh, you mean like your nifty new outfit? Did I mention that I'm your secret Santa this year? <laughs> what? It's just a little joke. Yeah, very little. Ho, 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 ho. Merry Christmas! Oh, wait a second. This is April. <laughs> oh, well, anyway. Anyway, welcome to another issue of PlayStation Underground. We're going to finish with Volume 3 with 3.4. Yeah, behind the scenes, Ben Center, and stuff like that. And also, got the PlayStation 2. Cool. So, anyway. There's, like, so much to do, and I'll be glad to show it to you. So, anyway. Here we go, let's continue on with this entire... This will be the final holiday issue for the, my demo series. So, here we go, let's go to Wormhole. And we're about to get to the finale. Alright, yay finale, yay! Alright, so, here we go. I'll show you about the level editor, and all you do is watch. Here we go. Welcome to part 7 of Project Wormhole. In this issue, we've added an editor, enabling you to design, build, and play your own levels. In just about any game project, there will be a lot of work that needs to be done that will never be seen by the players of the game. All of the data for the game needs to be created somehow, and the creation of custom tools is often required. One of the most commonly created tools is a level editor. The level editor we created for Wormhole runs on the PlayStation, making it easy to see what the level you are working on will play like in the game. This also makes it possible for anyone with a PlayStation to make levels, so give it a try. It isn't easy to make a good level, so here are a few pieces of advice. The editor has a lot of different controls, so look over the control screens carefully before you start. It may be helpful to write some of them down, or go to www.playstation.com slash wormhole for a more detailed description. Don't try to put too many enemies or obstacles in one place. Not only is this hard to survive in the game, but it can also cause the program to slow down. Be careful with sharp turns. It is hard to see around a sharp corner, and if there are any obstacles right after the sharp corner, the level might be too hard. Remember to put in health and ammo, but not too much. You'll probably need to test play your level a few times before you find the right balance. Save your work often. Nothing is worse than working on something for hours only to lose it all when the power goes out. Nintendo Wii Remote will break the TV! Anyway, anyway, so I just want to show you, you can edit your wormhole, also you can save it from memory card menu, and clear it to, to complete the section on that one. So that's all you have to do in that one. So anyway, um, I didn't do anything about changing the level, so... But you can do that if you have this issue. And let me tell you, it's pretty cool that you can add enemies, like that, and stuff like that. And it's still, it's still a fun idea. So anyway, yeah. Um, the next the next issue will show the, um, this too will be the finale of Wormhole game. So I'll show you on that one in like three levels to try it out. So anyway, yep, this is it. This is it, folks. Next one is the finale. Here we go with the next issue. Next issue is the last installment of Wormhole, and we'll finally put all the pieces together into a finished product. Thanks for all of your great suggestions. Wormhole couldn't have been such a success without all of your help. If you have made a level that you think belongs in the finished game, check out www.playstation.com slash wormhole for information on how to submit it.
that's it for that one. So, like I said, I'll be glad to show you more of the demo version right there. So, thank you guys for making um, this de um, demo series for Wormhole a success. Very nice job, guys. Very nice. So, anyway, so we're going to go to the bulletins next. And Maggie wants to tell you something and what to do for Christmas. So, here she is. Hey gang, since you have to get your holiday shopping done anyway, don't forget to drop by the threads area and pick up some new stuff, like this Gran Turismo 2 watch or this Um Jammer Lammy signature tee. Happy holidays and I'll see you next issue. Which I'll never be able to because it's not available. Dang it. Oh well. Eh, well, that's okay though. Anyway. Yeah, it shows you about... Um, everyone knows your username and stuff like that for message boards, moving on. And the last hidden codes, yeah, blah blah, we know that one before. Which I already showed you that on the last episode there, so. Anyway, um, okay, next part with threads, we already know that, speak your mind, don't need to do anything about. Okay, the next, the next video I will be doing, I'll show you Super Cross Circuit, MTV Music Generator, Twist Metal 4, Is Comet 3, Silent Bomber, Warm out the final version, of course. Let me show it. Uh, no thanks. Uh, no thanks. Uh, I might want to show you something fun about that one, too. So, there we go. Okay, credits. Alright, let's see the other people. Good job, people, for making a great series. It's just too bad it didn't last long after 2001. Wow, it's been almost 17 years when, that was, when it stopped. So, that's a long time. But, you know, that's okay, though. Because I really like this. Yeah, I really like how they um, show how fun this project is, especially with the interactivity, hearing what the people have to say, and keep the um, fans interactive. So that's pretty cool. So anyway, wow, there's like so much, so much um, demos I'll be demonstrating, uh, which I'll show that on part three and four. So. Okay, um, I do want to give you a little heads up on part part three um, and four. Um, I did have um, little issues earlier um, with some demos and stuff like that. Um, one demo, I got stuck and I have to restart it again. It's like, uh, do I have to go through this? <laughs> it was like a trap and then he's like, oh great, now I can't get out. Must be a glitch from the demo. So. Anyway, uh, you'll see it uh, in, uh, soon. But it's pretty funny uh, that happened to me. But it's okay though. It doesn't bother me. It's like a, almost like a gag reel of the thing. So. Hmm. Main menu, Goldman Productions. Hmm. Don't think I ever heard of those guys. But still, very nice job. Very nice job. Let's see. Let's see what we get special thanks to. Um, hmm. Insomniac, I know them. Koei, yep. Um, let's see here. Naughty Dog, yep. Temco, yep. And Whoopi Can. Yeah, that's the one that made Tomba. Oh, yeah. I didn't do well that Tomba 2 demo, but eh, you'll see that one when we get to that. Okay, yep. About the power cord problem and, and also the main print. Okay, what? Okay. All right, let's get out of here. We got some more stuff to show. So, okay, here comes the next one. Next one we're going to be doing is behind the scenes of Crash Team Racing and Spiral 2 Rich, uh, Ripto's Rage. Oh yeah, I think we should do the cheat first before we go to that. So here we go. We're going to do the cheat first. It's pretty much uh, um, a memory card cheat idea. So, there we go. If you hit, if you play the first one, you get a container of all 100 characters from the next one. So anyway, here we go. Crash Team Racing. kick butt as a kart racer. CTR, or Crash Team Racing, has been called by at least one reviewer the best kart game ever. Now it gives you even more ways to take on your friends. We asked the developers at Naughty Dog to show us why it's great, how to get the most out of it, and how you can get the inside edge that leaves your friends in the dust. When we caught up with them, they were trying to kick each other's butts at a nearby track.
Energy Dog are huge fans of the kart racing genre. Um, we're also extremely, extremely into multiplayer games, and we really wanted to bring the two of them to the PlayStation. And in America, this is the first time, actually, that it's really been done uh, for the PlayStation. So far, the press has been extremely enthusiastic about the game. I think one of the things that they're most excited about, besides the technology and the fact that the engine is so beautiful and so clean and crisp, is the fact that there are so many options. You can either do arcade mode, which is just get in and race against other cars, and you can do that one or two player. You can go versus mode, one, two, three, or four player, so you can play against your friends with a multi-tap. Um, you can go time trial mode, which is just you in the course in your best time. There's a relic race, which allows you to race around the course, and there are time boxes set out that you can hit that kind of freeze the clock for a little bit of time, so it's a little bit more strategy. There's an adventure mode where you collect gems, you collect trophies, you collect the things that uh, Crash Games are famous for giving you and go for that 100%. And then also there's a battle mode, which is kind of a totally different uh, take on the, on the racing, and you can go in with one, two, three, or four players, and, and basically there's no finish line. There's just missiles, rockets, shields. Uh, it, it's a, a match to the last last man standing and we have a lot of options there for teams, two on two, three on one, we can do a lot of different things. These two guys design the torturous tracks that are going to challenge you. We asked them what will stand out and how you can get an edge. I'm really proud about the big air. I think that the vertical gameplay in uh, this racing game is something we've never seen before in any game. And the idea of the hang time meter and trying to get big jumps and trying to get big air so that you land and you get the big turbos. Um, that we've seen people, they're just very addicted to trying to find places within the track that they can get larger jumps. Some of the other things we tried to focus on was um, giving each track a specific theme. In the sewer round, there's a half pipe that you race in, going up and down on the turns and, um, and sort of catching air on the lips of the, the pipe. And then another theme level we have is the castle level, where essentially all of the turns are 90 degrees. So it's a lot of right angles that you have to navigate very quickly and sharply. A lot of uh, racing games really are about soft control, and you have to just like work really hard just to stay on the track. And we decided early on that we were going to give the player very tight control, and then within that, make the gameplay complicated so that you had to choose good lines and you had to avoid the obstacles and really work hard to, uh, to maximize your lap times. We've got a, a pretty sophisticated um, turbo system where the player can achieve uh, turbos through um, at least four different ways. Through a combination of using all four types of those turbos, you can, on some tracks, almost be in a constant turbo for an entire lap. One tip for being the best driver possible, you've got to uh, hit the tops of the whoop-de-doos. You'll see like a bunch of bumps coming in a row in order to, to really get off those. If you hit the back side of one, you know, you're coming in, boom, you aren't moving forward anymore because you like slam into the back of it. So if you hit it, if you can nail the top of it, you come in and you'll like, go over the top. Something really cool about this game is that you can play with friends and select for more than 12 characters, including the bad guys. And there's a new bad guy, an oxide. Here's where he came from. As we were building the space round, it just clicked. Everything fell into place. Why not an alien? Jason had the idea of four legs. Our Japanese producers had the idea of the very racer helmet-like design. Several American uh, producers had the feedback of the dreads coming out of the sides of the helmet. It was a very good mix of all the input. Before we left, we found out that the Naughty Dog developers created an exclusive download for subscribers like you. As a special thank you to PlayStation Underground viewers for all your years of playing Crash games, we have on this PlayStation Underground a secret character that can be unlocked only with the PlayStation Underground. Play it. Tease your friends. Tease your friends? Tease your friends? What can you possibly tease your friends about? CTR. It's no ordinary racing game, but the chance to take your friends on in the ultimate battle on wheels. Good luck kicking butt. It's called Spyro 2 Ripto's Rage. But don't expect your standard sequel to Spyro the Dragon. This is completely different and way more challenging. 
Here's what the developers at Insomniac Games showed PlayStation Underground in an exclusive tour. For Spyro 2, we really kind of threw away all the rules and we learned that it's okay to be crazy. Spyro 1 was all about collecting objects. Spyro 2 is all about completion. Thank you, Spyro. Now I can put my friend back together. So in every level, whereas in Spyro 1, you just did the same thing, in Spyro 2, you're now doing at least three very different things from each other. We have what we call talisman challenges and orb challenges. The talisman challenges are more straightforward. They are required to complete a level. Orb challenges are more difficult. They're off the main path, and they're something that the hardcore players can really sink their teeth into. We added about 40 mini games, saving the little cavemen from the giant lizards is the hardest puzzle. Even experienced gamers need 10 or 15 tries. They all have that kind of addictive quality where it's, okay, just one more try and I'll get it. These challenges give Spyro 2 a much greater depth and creates more variety than Spyro 1 ever had. The game has so many new features that we asked team members to pick out their favorites. I really like how Spyro can swim now. The way that he dives down, it, it's very natural. And I love it that there is no breathing gauge or anything like that. So you just keep down there and enjoy the, the ambiance. And I love it how he can just shoot out of the water. We also have Super Shot, which is a targeting mechanic that Spyro uses in the game. He, he gets it through power-ups. And it's great. It's like having a shoot 'em up type game in Spyro. In Spyro 2, the bosses are big. They're they're badass. Can I say badass? They're badass. This game has over a hundred brand new characters, so that players will feel like they've entered a brand new world. I love the hockey. The ice skating, hockey just, you know, it was just kind of a little novelty idea. I always put hockey in the game. And it worked. Mm -hmm. I've seen people in the office play it and just, hockey, I want to play more hockey. And play they did. To take a break, artists took on programmers in a game of broomball. One employee comments on the spirit in the company. Completely accepting group of people here. There's a lot of courtesy. Everybody's very courteous to everybody else. There's a lot of respect here. And it's very refreshing. On the ice, the group found out that sitting in a computer for months takes a toll on athletic performance. Oh. Okay, this is where you want to hit it in. Not to be a tie with only a little bloodshed. We had a couple final questions for the team. Is one of them most like Spyro? That's Chuck. 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 He is so positive about everything. And no matter what you say to him, he just keeps coming back for more. In case you're wondering, I'm Chuck, and I'm honored, and I'm a clamp, and talk amongst yourselves. So thank you. Good night. Is there a team member most like Ripto? Uh, well, I'd say everybody has their moments of being like Ripto, uh, certainly myself included. I would say Oliver Wade. Oliver. 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 He was sort of designed based on me. I guess a lot of the designs that I do look like me anyway. You just put a lot of yourself into them. But uh, wanted uh, someone with a real fiery temper. I hate dragons! Yeah! Spyro 2 Ripto's Rage. It's a whole new gameplay experience as fresh and surprising as the people who made it. Feel my wrath. <laughs>
All right. Okay, we're going to leave you off for the next section here, and then we'll come back to part two. So I'll see you by then. So it's time to get work. Um, this is Amos Horseman here saying I'll see you in part two. If you think you've seen it all in video games, you probably haven't been here yet.